Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, it's a lovely sunny day here on Brookdale Farm um, and we're off to do a little bit of spreading. We've got to spread some more chicken manure on our oats here. Uh, and I just thought I would run through our Massey Ferguson 178 tractor here uh, and look at all the controls on it uh, and a little bit about how to drive it. Uh, so if we just take a little walk around the tractor first. Um, a couple of the important bits. The dipstick to check the engine oil is down here. <coughs> The oil filler is up here. When we're servicing them, they've got a little power steering, uh, no, sorry, not a power steering, an oil cooler filter in here. Um, and that's a little bit hard to get, that one, because um, they, they all seem to be a little bit different. Um, this one's got a front end loader on it, which makes it really handy, uh, really useful. <coughs> Um, to check your gearbox and differential oil, there is a little dipstick hiding down in here. It's a little bit hard to find that one. Now this tractor also has uh, dual hydraulics on it. So two sets of hydraulics on either side. Uh, PTO and three-point linkage uh, to check the radiator and put fuel in it there is a cover up on top of the engine here uh, uh, so the fuel is back here the radiator is up the front here uh, to close it the you've just got to pick that up uh, there's a little catch on there Okay, so the controls on this tractor. On this side, tucked down between the drivers, next to the driver's seat, is our two hydraulic levers. These operate the two remotes out the back of the tractor. Uh, at the moment, we've got the front end loader hooked into them. Uh, so these two levers operate the front end loader. The other lever we have tucked down in here is the power takeoff lever. So it's in neutral at the moment. To put it into the main driving position, we push that back as far as it will go. If we pull the lever forward, <coughs> um, it locks it to the wheels. So we get uh, the power takeoff turning only when we are driving along. So um, otherwise, if we push it back, it's in gear all the time, powered by the engine, and we'll be running whenever we have the clutch out. Now this has a live PTO on it, which means we can push the clutch right down to the plate here, push that into gear, let it let the clutch halfway out, and then uh, that will get everything on your machine turning before you put your tractor into gear and take off on your tractor. This is really important with things like harvesters, uh, the PTO harvesters. Uh, if you're pulling one of them, you want your harvester turning at the correct full speed before you start driving off into the crop. Um, and if you don't have live a live PTO and you've got to push the clutch down or when you push the clutch down to put it into gear, it disconnects your PTO. Uh, it becomes a bit of an issue. Now, unfortunately, the clutch for the PTO doesn't work on this. So I've got to put it into gear before I start the tractor, uh, which is not an ideal way to do it. Uh, but just running the spreader, that's not a lot of load on the tractor. So it won't, it doesn't hurt it when you're trying to start it, turning all of that over as well. Uh, fairly basic and standard dashboard on it uh, we've got our hour meter here this one has a fuel gauge which is very nice amp meter 
temperature gauge which isn't working at the moment I've got a new one of them coming oil pressure gauge and this little lever here this is a power shift lever uh, and it's quite handy uh, if you're working your tractor hard on hilly ground or ground that changes from soft ground to hard ground uh, you can change this on the move without using the clutch and it's like it gives you another gear it's sort of about half half a gear change so we're in high range up there if we're traveling along we're going up a bit of a hill the tractor starts to struggle a little bit we can just pull that down and it will drop us down half a gear or a gear um, and we can keep going without having to stop push the clutch and change on the main gearbox uh, we have a clutch pedal down here hand brake here and brake pedal steering brake pedals on this side and accelerator up there the foot accelerator is in a bit of an odd spot to get at uh, but we also have a hand throttle up here on the dashboard um, ignition here now these tractors are a little bit different uh, on the ignition setup they're more like the old Chamberlains uh, they don't have you don't turn the ignition on and then to the start position as soon as you turn this ignition it starts cranking the engine over now to turn it off we have a stop down here that we just pull out now down on our two gear levers here we've got a high and low range here uh, but in the middle is a start position so we need to have it in neutral on the range lever before it will start the start the neutral lockout doesn't work on this one but it's a good idea to always make sure you're in neutral before you start it this is our main gearbox it's a three speed uh, the same as the Chamberlain reverse is in the wrong spot and it always gets me reverse first across up for second and down for top gear now tucked in down next to the driver's seat on this one there's a another pedal tucked in under right under here um, and it's sort of a bit out of sight you don't really see it and it should actually fold up even further out of the way uh, this is a diff lock pedal um, so if you're starting to get bogged stand on that um, and it will lock both back wheels together so one of them can't spin by itself this tractor is actually really good it seems to float through the boggy country quite well uh, so I've never actually needed the diff lock although I've come close a few times we also have these two levers here now this one here operates your three-point linkage up down um, and there's a few other things in here like there's a position on this for draft control um, which means when you've got it set at a certain height uh, and your tractor goes over a bump or something like that uh, and the front lifts up or drops into a hole instead of the plow you've got on the back lifting or falling depending on which way the front went uh, it will compensate for that and keep the plow in the ground at the same depth uh, this lever here uh, has pressure written on it um, and you've got low pressure high pressure and constant pumping and constant pumping this this is for your hydraulics um, if you've got it down on low pressure it won't lift much at all if you've got it on high pressure it'll lift a lot more constant pumping gives you a constant flow if you're running a hydraulic motor or something like that i tend to just keep it up there all of the time uh, it doesn't i don't really use this that much now the front end loader on any tractor is a huge asset it, you can do all sorts of things and it makes life so much easier to have a decent front end loader um, whenever you park the tractor always drop the front end loader down onto the ground 
Uh, some people turn the bucket round so that it drains out of dra all the water drains out when it's raining. Um, that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. Um, but always put it down. This is a safety thing. Um, hydraulic lines can burst. Uh, if somebody happens to be walking under that, when the hydraulic line bursts, uh, it will fall on them. And there are that many accidents uh, that happen this way. Uh, hydraulic lines don't burst very often, but they always seem to wait for somebody to be standing under the hydraulics before they will burst. Uh, also, you see a lot of people when they're driving the tractor, they've got the front end loader way up in the air and they're looking underneath it. Uh, this is not a good way to operate. Always keep it as low as possible and look over the top of it. Even if you're carrying something like a bale of hay, um, <clears throat> or particularly if you're carrying something heavy in your bucket, the higher you lift it, the more likely you are to roll the tractor over if you get onto some uneven ground. And there's a lot of accidents that happen this way too with front end loaders. So always carry your load as low as possible uh, and look over the top of it rather than underneath it. Okay, so here we are on our tractor. We're about to take off and do some spreading. Uh, so we want to push the clutch down and make sure we're in neutral on both our gear levers. Uh, then we're going to turn the key to start it. Uh, while we are spreading, we are going to be in high range, first gear, low on our multi-power. Uh, that normally gives us a pretty good uh, uh, speed to be travelling at. Thanks for watching everybody. Um, if you're enjoying my videos and you haven't subscribed yet, I'd really appreciate it if you did. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much and I hope to see you all again next time. Thanks. Bye.